And I really was trying to find an opportunity to bring that kind of stuff into the, uh, into the United States. And then I started working in the motion picture industry as a uh, marketing and promotional coordinator and a Blue Skies development guy. And I always was trying to deal with whoever I was working with uh, to get them excited about animation and this type. And no one really did it until Harmony Gold just happened to stumble into my life in uh, 1984. And I just tried one last time to see if somebody was interested. And apparently the stars were in alignment and it all kind of like worked out in a very unique way for everybody because some people think that had it not been for Robotech, the whole appreciation for anime might not have come to the level that it is now because Robotech was actually on TV every day and everybody could see it and, and, and appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that that happened and I, you know, I hope that, um, you know, people uh, continue to watch anime because the, the medium, I consider it a, a separate, you know, look at how you do animation, uh, continues to impress me and grow, uh, you know, uh, daily. Well, on behalf of all the fans of anime, I'd like to say Domo Arigato Gozaimasu. Yeah, thank you very much. Actually, I noticed uh, the line for just one simple question has grown much longer. And so uh, what I'd like to do is uh, I, I'd like to give you guys first dibs after we uh, finish the rest of our presentation. We've got stuff to cover for future product. But uh, yeah, definitely, uh, if, if you wait there, yeah, we'll definitely get to you first. So, of course, uh, after Robotech 3000, we had a relatively long gestation period which brought us to the first continuation of Robotech in a much, in a very long time, which was Robotech The Shadow Chronicles. And it's currently available across North America. It's a very, very uh, well-selling DVD. And the current iteration, which is the Blu-ray edition, uh, has uh, never-before-deleted scenes, and it's now being presented in high definition. And we've also, uh, one of the big things that we've been working on since last year is initially it was a U.S. exclusive release or North America exclusive release. We've been currently working on cultivating markets internationally. We've been releasing Robotech to Shadow Chronicles around the world and in many cases alongside the original series. And uh, in our European release, uh, this was an interesting thing that was uh, happening was uh, one of the things that's going on is uh, many of you are aware that uh, there has been some uh, I guess, uh, tumultuous changes in the anime industry where some companies have been struggling, some companies have gone through transitions, and there's also this economic downturn that has occurred around the world. And one thing that uh, uh, happened was uh, TF1, which is one of the largest uh, media networks in Europe, actually came to us and said, uh, one of the things that we think that uh, we can do to help uh, reach out and cross over borders just beyond anime to promote Robotech the Shadow Chronicles is to reach out to the gamers market. So we did something a little bit uh, interesting and uh, experimental with uh, uh, the packaging design for uh, Robotech the Shadow Chronicles there, which is we had a new CG 3D actually commissioned. Um, of course, uh, this doesn't mean that we're going to have go all Pixar style 3D in the next sequel, but you know this is some of the stuff that we're uh, experimenting with right now. And Robotech is now also uh, legally available for downloads. Uh, interesting thing that happened to Robotech is, of course, you know, everybody posted it all over the place, whether it was YouTube, bootlegs, where. And one of the funny things that happened last year was that we found that it was one of the first anime-inspired animation series to be fan-subbed in Japan. So we started seeing bootlegs in Japan with Japanese markings and Japanese subtitles uh, released in Japan, which I think was the first. That, that was actually like kind of backwards as what anime was happening in, back in the 80s. And Robotech The Shadow Chronicles is presently number one on Hulu. Just last week we had a new release of Robotech The Shadow Chronicles on Hulu. Actually it was uh, about two weeks ago. And on its first day, it became uh, the number one most watched movie on the Hulu network. And then within two days, it became number one movie of the week. And then within a couple of weeks, it became the number one movie of the month. And right now, even though it's only been out of about two weeks, it's reached the top 15, passing other titles which had been on Hulu for many. And so it's- Wait, 15 of all time? Number 15 of all time, uh, since, Hulu, since Hulu started. 
I know, I, I couldn't believe it. And, uh, of course, uh, every time we have a new release of Rogue Tech the Shadow Cross, we have some fans that groan, all right, they're double dipping again. This release is absolutely free. Or actually, uh, it's sponsored by uh, Bing, so you can watch it on Microsoft's Dime. So, there you go. <laughs> And a current release that's been very successful, this was one of our uh, very happy success stories, is uh, how many of you are into RPGs? All right. And uh, how many of you fondly remember the old Palladium Robotech RPGs? All right, we got a good healthy crowd here. Uh, some of you may be aware that uh, we had an interesting story going on with uh, Palladium. Uh, the founder of the company is Kevin Sabita, and he gave us some grim news uh, when we were first signing up. Um, he let us know that the CFO of the company had embezzled all of the company's cash reserve, and the company was on the brink of going bankrupt. And when they had sued the CFO to try to recover the company's funds, he had embezzled it all. He, uh, there was no money left to recover. And so, uh, he was very forthright and honest to us, which I respect. And, you know, Kevin had said, hey, listen, our company's in bad shape. Uh, we're, you know, we may not be here next year. And we were also talking to other RPG companies as well uh, for the Robotech RPG license. But one of the things that we saw in Kevin Sambit and uh, Palladium was that their staff had the eagerness to drive, make the best Robotech RPG game possible. And they had the experience. But of course, they, you know, we had to take a little bit of a risk and entrust them with this in spite of the situation their company was in. And uh, last year, we had announced that Robotech The Shadow Chronicles, the game, was coming out. And what happened was, it became a huge, huge success. It was one of their biggest successes in years. And the revenue that came from the game actually helped put back on its feet. So it was nice to hear that the company is, uh, you know, it looks like they're going to survive now uh, with the help of Robotech. And of course, uh, just like DVDs, they're double dipping. Uh, they've released hardcover and deluxe editions uh, with ad value added material uh, for the real hardcore fans. Uh, you know, of course, they've got them in two fans. We found that people who like to play RPG games, you know, going over to their friends' houses, they like the small form factors so it's easy to carry around. Or you can have the nice big giant, you know, advanced D&D &D style hardcover books if you want. And uh, we also have, uh, now we're starting to get into expansions such as uh, the classic Robotech the Macross Saga. One of the nice things here is some of the complaints we got from the classic RPG books is, you know, when we announced that Palladium was doing the license, they were like, oh no, not Palladium again. They're, some of their artwork back then was really sketchy. I didn't think it was that good. And we had decided to find out, you know, what was the situation with the production of these books back in the 80s. And uh, Kevin had, uh, let us know that back then, when the source material, they had to more or less spend for themselves. In many cases, they had to go look for the original Japanese material, and the reason why they had trouble reproducing some of the artwork was they couldn't find the material. So now that we had opened archives to them, gave them source materials, neither published in Japan, or you can take a look at it now. They've created new original artwork that's to the look of the series, in really good quality. And with uh, the next uh, release, which was Robotech the Master, uh, finally released some artwork that was neither released in the US nor Japan. So uh, they're getting into really good new material now uh, that also is uh, faithful to the original Japanese production designs. And uh, here are the additional releases which are coming soon, which is Robotech the New Generation, which is now going to finally complete the original series. And the first new edition, uh, which is original new material, which is Robotech the Expeditionary Force, uh, the Marine Source Book, which is going to, uh, they were actually, in this case, working off of uh, Carl's original spirit of his intention for uh, building the Sentinel storyline, which is essentially the Expeditionary Force planet hopping, much like the American uh, Expeditionary Force was island hopping during World War II. And so we're gonna encapsulate some of the story elements that were from the Sentinels finally into a new modern game. And, of course, this is Comic-Con. And one of the big questions we got last year was, all right, new Robotech Comics, it's been a little while. Uh, the last time we had a Robotech Comics, the tie-in to Robotech The Shadow Chronicles, 